The next uh, speaker and the, the final speaker for this morning's session is, is Matt Parker. Matt is a social entrepreneur and public health technologies. He's best in Bangkok. And he leads public health technology at Open Dream, a technology-powered social enterprise in Thailand that helps government improve health outcomes and strengthen surveillance of emerging health threats. He focuses on novel surveillance innovations, in particular participatory surveillance, wastewater-based epidemiology, and One Health. Uh, Matt will speak to us today a little bit about some of these things that he's been doing uh, with um, uh, Open Dream. Thank you, Matt, and welcome to um, the D Digital Public Health Conference. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Parker. I'm from Open Dream, a public health technology company based in Bangkok. My goal today is to share some innovations that could help other countries benefit from effective and affordable surveillance. So Open Dream is about 15 years old. We started building health tools for the general public, but we later expanded to public health technology for government. As Justin pointed out, we tend to focus on One Health and participatory surveillance. So today I'm gonna to talk about three projects. The first is uh, human health related, the second is animal health, and the last project is a new type of surveillance that we're piloting. So the first project is a participatory surveillance system that collects anonymous health data from Thai citizens. Dr. Me was Thailand's first personal healthcare application and has over a million downloads. We also added a line chatbot in 2020 called Sabadi, which the Ministry of Public Health has used during COVID. Together, these two apps, Sabadi and Dr. Me, collect participatory symptom data. If symptoms match uh, our case definition for influenza or COVID, then we deliver personalized health recommendations to those users. But where does all this data go? All this data collected by the apps is fed into our Sixth Sense system. This system is a public website that displays a real-time map of influenza and COVID-like illness across Thailand. But since COVID doesn't care about national borders, we also contribute our Thai data to a global system created by ending pandemics called Global Flu View, which aggregates influenza-like and COVID-like illness across Europe, the US, Thailand, and other countries. Public health leaders can use this data to estimate COVID cases beyond clinical testing. Fewer and fewer people are going to hospitals for PCR tests, or if they do an ATK at home, they don't report the result to the hospital. As you can see from this red arrow going down, so there's fewer and fewer people testing in hospitals, even though COVID-like symptoms are actually increasing. So there's a disconnect. This is why participatory surveillance is incredibly valuable to policymakers. Building this technology is not hard. The hard part is remembering that the public are part of public health. Participatory surveillance is a win-win that can empower citizens to take better care of their own health and improve disease surveillance for government. But public health doesn't just mean human health. Remember that One Health looks at the interfaces between humans and animals. And a perfect example of the One Health approach is the PAWDD system. So these disease detectives, these disease detectives are part of a system called PAWDD. PAWDD empowers local community members to prevent and respond to outbreaks. The system is three things. First, 
It's a disease surveillance platform for local government. And second, it's an app for farmers to take pictures of sick livestock and report suspicious health events. And third, it's an early warning and response system for outbreaks. PawDD works when a villager reports a suspicious health event via a smartphone app, such as some dead chickens or a sick cow. If PawDD verifies a potential outbreak, the reporter is notified to take immediate action to prevent further spread until a full-scale response team can arrive. When it comes to outbreaks, speed is everything. PawDD has trained over 20,000 disease detectives across Thailand. And as of this presentation, they have submitted over 450,000 reports to the system, 75 of which have been confirmed to be dangerous viruses with potential to spill over to humans. Surveillance works when you engage people with things that matter to them. This leads to more data for systems like PawDD and therefore a better early warning system for future outbreaks. The main idea is that you cannot train every farmer to be an epidemiologist, but you can teach them to be the frontline eyes and ears of the public health system. This model can be deployed in multiple contexts at low cost to government, but with massive impacts on public health. So far, I've talked mostly about participatory surveillance, but I'd like to change gears a little bit and talk about what we think is the future of surveillance, wastewater. So most of us have probably heard of wastewater-based epidemiology, but what about wastewater surveillance and animal pathways? Wastewater-based epidemiology works because it complements other types of surveillance. It can detect infections outside of clinical testing days to weeks before cases show up in hospitals. We also know that a wide variety of high-risk viruses are detectable in human wastewater, coronaviruses, influenza, dengue. But when it comes to animal wastewater, research tends to focus on food and food security, E. coli, for example, or AMR. But what's missing is active surveillance in these animal pathways for spillover. And new technology might make that possible. Biosensors can detect these pathogens in wastewater. They are increasingly affordable, require minimal sample processing, and crucially can be used by unskilled volunteers. And then there's next generation sequencing that can find novel pathogens, emerging diseases previously unknown to an area. So the question is if uh, wastewater based epidemiology can detect outbreaks earlier and dangerous viruses are in wastewater, and many of those viruses come from animals, then why don't we look at animal wastewater? Well, there's simply not enough research on animal wastewater and zoonosis. As you can see from the red line on this chart, crucially, much of this research is from rich countries that have good wastewater treatment plants. And the fact is that lower income countries don't have these plants and are the most likely to have a spillover event. Which is why the green line on this graph is important. It's from a study in Thailand that looked at rural wastewater sample sites. And it found that SARS-CoV-2 could be detected 20 days earlier than clinical testing. 
It didn't look at animal wastewater, but it does show that you can do this type of surveillance in rural settings. For example, community health workers could help collect and test samples of animal wastewater and then upload photos of the test result to a One Health system. And then the same samples could be sent to labs for sequencing, finding viruses that you didn't know were floating around before cases show up in hospitals. We're actually testing this idea by looking at a limited number of pathogens and trying a community usable biosensor developed by Chiang Mai University. We're simply adding a wastewater report type to an existing system like PODD. So what we're doing is combining proven wastewater-based epidemiology with surveillance technology. The result could be an innovative early warning system. So to recap, um, so far I've talked about uh, participatory surveillance in humans, animals, and an integrated wastewater system. But these are just a few examples of what countries could be exploring when it comes to public health innovation. In fact, some of the best solutions are from local community members themselves. Technology is only part of the answer. For example, you can use social media, as has been talked about quite a lot in this conference, to improve health literacy. But that's typically a one-way street. What we recommend is to consider public health a two-way street. If you remember to invite the public to participate back into public health, you will have better surveillance and healthier, more engaged citizens. Thank you for your time.